In this video, we're going to take a look at Dijkstra's algorithm, which is a minimum spanning tree algorithm. That is, it finds the minimum distance between a vertex and all other vertices in the graph. So this is an algorithm. Therefore, we're going to kind of go through the step one by one, compute it on this graph, and I'll show you how to do it step by step. First things first, we have to pick a starting point. Uh, for the sake of this, I will pick A, and we're going to put a box around it to signify that we have started and solidified this vertex as being a node that we have already used in our tree. So we'll do that. And then second, beside each vertex here, we're going to put where it came from and the distance to it from that point. Uh, for the beginning, we'll put infinity if it hasn't been touched yet. So if we have, say, G, we haven't started from anywhere, so we put a dash, and then the distance right now is infinity. So we're going to do this for all of our points here. And this will keep track of where we're coming from and how far we've went to get there. So this is a very important part of the algorithm here. So now that we have everything labeled, we can take a look at what we do now. So here's what we do. We take a look at the distance from A to each of the vertices that it hits. So it hits B. So we take a look at B, going this way, and we fill in this information here at the top. And we say, okay, well, this is a distance of 14, or sorry, it comes from A, and it's a distance of 14. Okay, what about G? Well, G also comes from A, and has a distance of 10. What about H? H well, comes from A, and has a distance of 17. So those are all the vertices that A can go to from here. We only look at those ones. And now what we do is we say, okay, well, which one is the shortest distance? 14, 10, or 17? Well, 10 is clearly the shortest. So what we do is we say, okay, now we're going to solidify G and say, now A is going to G at a distance of 10. And that is definitely going to be in our tree. So we can fill in this path here. And we say, okay, that's good. So the next slide here, solidified that. So now what we do is we take a look at all the things that either A or G hits. So what does this mean? Let's take a look here. From G, we can get to B. And we take a look at the distance here. So how do we calculate this distance? Well, if we come from G, then we're going 10 to get to G plus another 3 from G to get to B. So we have G 13 to get to B. And what do we notice about this? Well, it's shorter than going from A to B. So A to G to B is shorter than A to B. So we're going to cross out this original information stack we have here. So we're going to cross out A14 since that's not optimal. Okay, so let's do it with some other ones here. We have G to H. So A to G to H, you can get to H from G. And that's going to be 10 plus 6. So that's 16. That's also shorter. So we'll cross that out at H. Now what about to I? Well, I comes from G, and it's 10 plus 4, so that's 14. And that's obviously going to be faster because we haven't gone there from anywhere else yet. So, now we have some new numbers we can look at. So which is the closest? We've already done G, so is it 13, 16, or 14? Well, it's 13, so now we solidify B in there. And we say, okay, this is now the new path. We now add B to our tree. So before we had A to G, now we're adding B there. So that's 3 from G to B, and 10 from A to G. Okay, so we've done the second one now. So again, we're just going to keep doing this with all of these. So we have our information rewritten, overridden, so everything's a little bit faster. Uh, this A here is a little bit incorrect. It should be 
G in 16. Okay, that looks good now. So now we need to fill in some more information. So we just went to B, so we should probably override some things from B. Okay, well we can get to C from B, and that's going to be a distance of 13 plus 9, which is 22. We can get to F from B, so that's going to be a distance of 13 plus 10, which is 23. And that's about it. So now we need to take a look at all of our information here. So we have a 16, a 14, a 23, and a 22. Well, 14 is the lowest number, so we should go to I from G, because it says, okay, 14 is the smallest distance to our next vertex, and it's coming from G, so we'll put a line there. Okay, we're good. So now we can go to the next step. Can fix in this information once again, so that should be G and 16. What about now? So from I, we can put in some new information here. So if we go from I to H, it's actually only a distance of 14 plus 1, which is 15. So that's more efficient than going from G to H. So AGIH is faster than AH and faster than AGH. What about I to B? Well, from I, it's going to be 14 plus 7, which is 21. So that's pretty fast. Okay, so we have some new information here. Cross that out for being inefficient. And we have 15, 21, and 22. Well, 15 is definitely the fastest from I, so we'll color that in and solidify it into our tree. Okay, let's keep going now. So at this point, we're not really looking at anything new here. We just went to H and H doesn't connect anywhere else. So we're not updating any values here. So we just picked the lowest one. So, okay, look, I is coming from 21 or 21 from I to F and that's quicker than 22 from B. So we'll fill in I now and we'll solidify that in. Okay. So that's good. I goes to F. What about this last one? Well, we just hit F so we can update one last piece of information. And if it comes from F, it's going to be 21 plus 2, which is 23. But that's not faster than going from B. So we cross that out. And it's the only spot left. So we simply take the line there and we solidify that. And then we have our final tree. So, this is drawn incorrectly, this should be coming from B. So, we have that there, and this is how it should be drawn. Okay, so, what does our final tree look like? Well, A goes to G, and then we have G splitting off into B and I. So we can do that. We can say, okay, well, G goes to I and G goes to B. So now we follow B to C and that's the end of that leg. When we go from G to I, I splits into H and F. So here we have it. Here is our final tree. And this is a minimum spanning tree. So the distances between all these paths are the smallest they could possibly be. So that is how we use Dijkstra's algorithm. Um, it works for directed graphs too. In that sense, we could go either way, so we didn't have to take a look at direction. But if you follow a direction, let's say we have to go uh, this way, then when computing from G to B, we simply would not update that piece of information because we can only go in one direction. So that's what would happen there. And if it's impossible to get to a vertex, so for instance, let's say we have a vertex that only goes like this and we're starting over here, then there's no possible way to ever get down here. So we just label it permanently as a minus sign for no information and an infinity, which just means we can't get to it. So that is Dijkstra's algorithm. That is probably the most important algorithm for tree finding in a discrete math course. So that's what we took, take a look at.
So hopefully you can figure this one out. There's lots of practice problems online. Uh, they're really tedious to do, but doing it once or twice is probably a good idea. So I'm not going to give you any answers for these, but I'll give you a graph. I'll draw one now, I'll give you some distances and try it yourself. Um, this is going to be really tedious. I won't have answers for this, but it's probably good to give it a try just to see what numbers you can get. And you can tell me what the minimum spanning tree is here. So that looks about good. Let's give them some numbers. Um, 8, 5, 10, 2, 1, 6, 3, 3, 9, 10, 7, 4, and I will label this A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. That also might give you an idea of how exam instructors make up these questions because this is literally what I did. I just put a bunch of letters and numbers on a graph. And for consistency, I will say, if you're gonna do this as practice, start with A and see what you get. I, I might do this in my spare time and just put it in a note somewhere. So if anyone in the comments wants to answer this question, I can tell you if you're right or not. Um, that looks good. Try this on your own and hopefully you get it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, share it because it helps me out a ton.